I was married. I was living in Danville, California, a little hot valley right outside of Walnut Creek in the Bay Area. And uh, we had a two-story place. It was a, a condominium kind of place. It was downstairs, upstairs, but uh, the air conditioning didn't work very good. So when it got hot in the valley, it would be extremely hot upstairs. And uh, one night, after I spent uh, a couple hours of prayer and meditation and everything, went upstairs. My wife was uh, very uncomfortable upstairs. She said she was going to go downstairs and sleep on the sofa where it was about 20 degrees cooler. And uh, she was down there, and, of course, she was worried about my job. She was worried about our first child being sick and uh, general worries about finances and things. I lay there that night, and it was, I was kind of in and out, drifting in and out, a sense of leaving my body, coming back. Just, it was all of a sudden, whoosh, and I'm at the ceiling, and I'm looking down, and there's this long cord attaching the me at the ceiling, looking down at the me sleeping at the bed. And I go, hmm, okay. It's like I'd done this before, but it was a little different this time for some reason. It was more conscious. And I know wherever you think about going, that's where you go in that state. And so I wanted to be with my wife. And so I started drifting towards the wall and down the hall and through the wall. And I'm downstairs. And as I'm crossing downstairs in this state of being, whatever it may be, um, I sit on the sofa where my wife is sleeping. And she sits up immediately and her eyes get huge. She looks at me and what, what's all this? And so that's a little unusual because usually you have out of body experience. Nobody sees you. And uh, but she's seeing me right there I was. And then the sofa itself started to levitate maybe 18, 24 inches, maybe, maybe two feet. And it starts floating around in front of them. It's actually hovering. And she's really getting scared now. So it's getting very hard for me to stay there. But I look at her and I tell her, whenever you really need me, I will always be there for you. And then she got really scared and boom, zap. I'm zipped back into my body and it's like I fell from a thousand feet into my body, just clump and all of a sudden I'm 10,000 pounds weighing. And uh, I go, wow. Oh. So the next day, breakfast, my wife gets up, she goes, oh my God, I had this terrible, terrible nightmare last night. I said, no, let me tell you what happened last night. She says, no, no, let me tell you about my nightmare. I said, no, here's what happened last night. And so I told her the whole thing in full detail and everything. She looked at me and she goes, no, no, no. She says, I know you, you're picking up on my thoughts or you picked up on my dream, you read my dream. And I said, no, what really happened? really kind of spooked her out. She, she made me promise never to do anything like that to her again. And, uh, but it also did something else. It also brought our relationship a little closer together in a very different way. I realized that my love for my wife was so much deeper. She really was truly my dream lover. And, and she really needed me to be there, regardless of where I've ever been or going to be or whatever the circumstances are. I will find a way to be with you. I promised her, and I'm going to hold to that promise. Now, was it a shared reality? Was it a shared dream? Was it an experience? I don't know. I don't explain these things. I only know what I experienced, and what I experienced was love for my wife.